in obstructive sleep apnea. Your concerns are tiredness, daytime sleepiness, accidents, work accidents, work performance, illness, relationships with their sleep partner, and relationships just during the day with people they come in contact with. Um, from Richard Swab, the obvious things in obstructive sleep apnea, heart attacks, AFib, congestive heart failure, pulmonary hypertension, sudden death, arrhythmias which lead to, to MI, um, high blood pressure, they're all associated with and aggravated with, by obstructive sleep apnea. Your risk factors, and this is the stuff you need to tell your patients, this is standard risk factor for heart attack. Overweight increases it by seven times. High blood pressure increases it by eight times. Smoking increases it by 11 times. Obstructive sleep apnea increases the risk of heart attack by 23 times. So when you look at your patient and you say, I can get them treated and decrease their possibility of a heart attack by this great a factor, that's an incredible gift. Um, the the uh, prevalence among all these medical conditions, look at the percentage of these people that have obstructive sleep apnea. And their physicians are not diagnosing these. Your cardiologists are dealing with people who have high blood pressure, strokes, MIs, and they are not getting them for sleep studies. You've got to enroll these patients. You try to get to the physicians, but they are swamped. The difference you can make in these people, people's lives, medical concerns, hypertension, stroke, uh, uh, MIs, cardiovascular accidents of, of any form, obesity, atherosclerosis, kidney disease. We'll go over the TMJ, bruxism, headache, sleep connection later. So many kids, so many kids are um, diagnosed as ADD, ADHD, uh, that have sleep issues. My next slide, and I may need some help getting this up, um, fibromyalgia, uh, the repetitive oxidative stresses, all the times you're decreasing um, oxygen to the body, releasing of C-reactive protein, which occurs with periodontal disease, and we've been trying to get people to know about for the last half decade. Um, distant effects in the body, erectile dysfunction because you're disrupting the, the nitric oxide uh, cycle.
PETA Wearway. ENT tonsils adenoids. Don't wait to outgrow them. The problems will have developed. Orthodontic development. Maintain the airway growth and development and avoid the symptoms now because the symptoms later are worse. Another fact to throw out with PETA. Electronics prior to sleep, computers, tablets, cell phones, TVs, uh, all their games, they, I didn't put on here, they emit a blue light. Blue light disrupts the melatonin levels. These young kids are not following the normal sleep cycle. So as long as they keep using these games, the, the body is not going to put out the melatonin that signals, hey, it's time to end the day and go to sleep. They are then sleep disrupted. They're labeled ADD, ADHD. You don't get into the deeper layers of sleep, so human growth hormone is, uh, is produced and released, and you end up decreasing their growth. Peter's sleep apnea, again, ADHD. How much of that is mislabeled because they're not getting sleep, they're not getting out in the sunshine, they're not eating properly? You'll see these kids, just as in the video, anger, mood swings, depression, tiredness, fatigue, acting out, all the behavior problems, memory problems, scholastic failures. Obstructive sleep apnea triples the risk of strokes in men, increases the risk of all vascular events, and what they found in studies of cardiac patients who need CPAP and oral appliance therapy is their number of cardiac crises skyrockets when they're not compliant with their breathing therapy. The long-term effects of repeated oxidative stress, we've been seeing the studies for the last several years of what happens with periodontal disease. Those same chemical changes are occurring uh, with with sleep apnea. Uh, from uh, the Phillips and Wong chapter in uh, Giles Levine, who'll be at that uh, upcoming meeting we mentioned, uh, their, their text, how apnea and obstructive sleep apnea lead to these oxidative stresses, inflammation, sympathetic overactivity, causing all the cardiovascular dis disease that we've described. Triad of obstructive sleep apnea, obesity, and high blood pressure they go hand in hand. The obesity people eat when they're tired, they eat to stay awake, they eat out of boredom, they eat to live. They've pumped out a, a lot of uh, adrenaline at night, their blood pressure's high, kidney problems, and they're irritable. The other triad of obstructive sleep apnea, bruxism, and GERD. If you have a patient coming in that, especially overweight, but appears to be sleepy, They've ground their teeth, and there's evidence of uh, dental erosion. Assume that you've got an obstructive sleep apnea patient. Until proven otherwise, if you see someone that is grinding their teeth and overweight and taking meds for GERD, assume that, that they're a sleep patient. The sleep problems, when someone's struggling, to breathe, they pump more acid out of the stomach uh, and that eventually gets into the airway. Uh, bruxism, there's a lot of discussion now on which way cause and effect in that pair goes. But in all these patients, obstructive sleep apnea and TMD patients, there's impaired pain perception, increased sympathetic response, increased inflammatory pathways activated in the body, increased bruxism, daily and nightly, there's a definite association. The question is, what's the direction of cause and effect there? So with all these patients, you'll see bruxism, sleep changes, GERD, irritable bowel syndrome, emotional stress, pain, and chemical sensitivity. But there are differences. In obstructive sleep apnea, it's more often male, it's more often chronic, and it's more often progressive. TMD is usually female, episodic, and self-limiting. So there are differences but there's a strong association. Know that in a lot of your patients that have uh, gastroesophageal reflux disease, GERD, heartburn, whatever you want to call it, they're taking meds for that. That decreases magnesium absorption in the body and you get greater restless leg syndrome, greater periodic limb movement syndrome, and increased bruxism. So you're gonna see grinding from these patients aggravated by the lack of magnesium. The GERD is 
increased by respiratory efforts of trying to breathe in. The laryngeal inflammation, swelling, edema make it harder to breathe. The airway is swollen and narrowed. And so resolution of the obstructive sleep apnea may require treatment of the airway with CPAP or appliance and uh, meds for the GERD and something to reduce the inflammation in the airway, medrol dose pack or more extended, you know, the 12-day or extended period. So if someone's got GERD and obstructive sleep apnea, they require concurrent therapy. He, this is the information that your physicians are not going to be passing on to your patient. This is the situation that you're going to deal with when you're not getting the results in the appliance therapy. Are you handling these other factors? If they've got GERD, are you going to be willing to put them on a Medrol dose pack, decrease swelling in the airway, let them know that they need to decrease the amount of acid they're producing, and tell them that they're not going to see results for two, three, four, five, eight weeks for things to resolve. So intermittent appliance appliance wear, sleep appliance wear, decreases resolution of the GERD. Decreased resolution of the GERD decreases effectiveness of your appliance wear. So the appliance has to be worn consistently and you have to treat both things. Summary, all these things are related. Sleep in studies, and you need to be able to tell this to your patient and your physicians. We have studies that show that sleep treatment improves. Diabetes, um, diabetes, insulin sensitivity, the oxidative stresses, the, the C-reactive protein, the inflammation, the coagulation disorders, cardiovascular events, endothelial, uh, spell that wrong, endothelial disorders, um, mental and emotional recuperation, and clearance of beta amyloid uh, associated with Alzheimer's from the brain. So tell people, there really is an effect. We show that people who are getting better sleep do a better job of clearing uh, beta amyloid associated with Alzheimer's. Uh, untreated sleep apnea, um, twice the mortality in the next dozen years, and increased severity of all the systemic diseases associated with it. Repeat on snoring. Airway resistance and resonance cause vibration of soft tissues. This vibration causes demyelination of the upper airway muscle neurons, loss of airway dilator muscle reflex. Snoring equals future obstructive sleep apnea. Don't treat just snoring. Snoring, crescendo snoring with silence is an indicator of apnea. They're going real loud and then silence. And then they'll start again, build up. That crescendo and silence, the silence is the indicator of apnea. A snore appliance only stops the tissue vibration and the noise. It is deadly to treat only to the snoring. You will turn a noisy apneic into a silent apneic, putting you and your patient at risk.